Praise the Lord, everyone. Uh, we usually get this question from time to time, and I've uh, uh, got around finally to make a, a separate video concerning this question that we usually get um, from individuals who inquire about why we do not baptize according to Matthew twenty-eight nineteen. The question goes something like this. Brother Gabriel, we realize that you primarily baptize in the name of Jesus Christ only for the remission of sins. Why not baptize in titles uh, Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Well, to answer that question very briefly is we do baptize according to Matthew 28. Um, why wouldn't we? Um, that's the oracle of God, and we are to follow that. Uh, we do not bend the scriptures, twist it, rearrange it, or input our own uh, meaning. No, uh, we follow it precisely. And what the scripture saith, that is what we do. But it's hard for many to understand this, and um, hopefully by the grace of God I'll be able to explain that in this brief teaching, uh, how to properly uh, follow or obey obey Matthew twenty eight nineteen. Let's go on and read at verse 18. And Jesus came and spake unto them, saying, All power. Let's go back to them. Who is the them referring to? His disciples. Okay, they are there. They are the ones in view. Uh, they are his audience. And he states, all power. How much is all? All means all. All power is given, delegated, handed over, supplied by a source. And who is the source? The Father. God. God has the power. He is the originator, the, the possessor uh, of power. And that was given unto the me. Who is the me? Who is the speaker? Jesus Christ. So all power was given unto him, Jesus Christ, in heaven and in earth. All that which can be seen and all that which cannot be seen, things visible and invisible. Things of our awareness and things that we are not even aware of at this point in time. So he has dominion, authority, rule, dictatorship, dominion, um, jurisdiction, whatever you want to call it, governing, authority, whatever. Jesus Christ has it all. He has all power. Uh, it's been given to him by a source and that was given to him by his father, God. All power in heaven and earth. Now, verse 19. Go ye. Now, who is this referring to? He's referring to his disciples. He's commissioning his disciples to go ye and teach. Now, you cannot teach unless you've been taught. You cannot make a disciple unless you have been a disciple yourself. Okay? Um, this commission is not for everyone just yet. Uh, you cannot teach people unless you've been taught, unless you know uh, the doctrines of Jesus Christ. You cannot disciple someone if you have not been discipled in the doctrines of Jesus Christ yourself. If you don't have a grasp of the, of, of the primary truths of the Word of God, then it's best not to go out and try to make a disciple because you'll just turn them into the devil that you are. You'll turn them into a false teacher, a false uh, you know, uh, believer, uh, if you do not know what you're talking about. So this commission is for, he's stating this towards his disciples. They are to go. Go ye therefore. Now therefore is therefore a reason because of the preceding uh, statement Jesus made that all power has been given unto him. So since all power has been given unto him, so since all power has been given unto Jesus, he's able to say or commission Go ye therefore, uh, because all power has been given unto him, and teach, make disciples, all nations, all kindreds, uh, tribes, and ethnicities, and races, cultures, backgrounds, nations, all nations, baptizing them. What is baptism? Baptizo is full immersion. Not partial immersion, not not uh, fifty percent immersion, not ninety five percent immersion. Okay, not ten percent immersion. I've seen baptisms done 
by uh, sprinkling on the forehead. That's not baptism. I've seen individuals uh, doused with a pitcher of water. Uh, that's not baptism. I've even seen baptisms where a person was placed head first in the water and their, their feet in the water, but their torso, uh, they were crouched down, they were on their knees. Uh, their torso was clearly out. 50% of their body was out of the water. This was done in a bathtub. Um, that's not full immersion, okay? If you're going to be baptized, make sure there's a body of water that you can be fully immersed in, okay? If you have to fill your bathtub up to the top and clean up the water later, do it. It's worth it. Uh, if you have to, you know, go to the nearby lake or creek or river or ocean, do it. Uh, but full immersion is 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 burial. Um, it's baptized. It's 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 going down and coming out of the burial of the tomb. When we bury a dead body, a corpse, we dig out a deep enough hole, put the body under, and cover him with dirt. He's he's buried. Okay, and that's what happen. That should happen in in baptism. It should be a full immersion. Okay, there shouldn't be limbs sticking out. Um, we don't do that for the even the corpses. Uh, of the natural man <laughs> for the crows to come and pick at no hands and feet all limbs are underneath the earth there's there's decomp decomposition that takes place it's it's a full burial but unlike the dead bodies that don't rise again jesus he went in the tomb and he rose okay and more and more mortality put on immortality and likewise with us when we're buried with christ in baptism we're risen to with with christ to new life Okay, the operation made without hands takes place underneath the water. The circumcision made without hands, all of our sins are washed away, are remitted, and we're new creatures. We come out of the water. We, that's a new life. In the name of the Father. Now, notice name is singular. It doesn't say names. Uh, it says in the name of the Father, of the Son, of the Holy Ghost. Now, the question is, what is the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Ghost? I believe I have a video teaching on that. Uh, it's a little long, but I believe it's worth it. Uh, by the grace of God, if you can get through it uh, with ears to hear and eyes to see, you, you will truly be blessed. I'll put the link in the description. What is the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost? Uh, but this is a condensed teaching, and I'll just tell you, in Acts chapter 4, verse 12, the Bible reads, Neither is there salvation in any other... For there is none other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. And that name is Jesus Christ. Teaching them. Now here's the teaching part. Go ye therefore and teach all nations. Okay. What are we, what are we to teach? That they are to observe all things. All things. Whatsoever I have commanded you. Now. Suggested to you? No. Um, given you to ponder and think about and determine whether it's correct or not? No. He said the things that I have commanded you. What is the commandment? The commandment is, one of the commandments is baptism. And I believe in, um, I believe it's Mark. No, actually Luke. Uh, excuse me. Yeah. Luke chapter uh, 24, verse 47, the Bible reads, And that repentance and remission of sins should be preached in his name among all nations, beginning at Jerusalem. You notice he, he does say all nations there, and we do see all nations. And uh, repent, here's the, here's the commandment, repentance, repentance, and remission of sins. Yeah, I know this is spelt a little incorrectly. Um, should be preached in his name beginning among all nations, uh, beginning at Jerusalem. So part of the commandment is baptism and also repentance and what about remission of sins? Now, what might that be? Well, how does one's sins get remitted? What did Peter say on the day of Pentecost in Acts 2.38? Let's go there. 
Acts chapter 2. This is in Jerusalem, verse 38. Then Peter said unto them, Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the remission of sins, and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. So Peter was being very faithful to the commandment, and he was uh, preaching repentance. Uh, he was preaching baptism for the remission of sins. And that's what baptism is. for the remi It's the remitting of sins. So brethren, when we read a passage such as Matthew 28, 19, that commissions us to go out uh, to teach all nations, uh, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost, we now know that Father uh, is in reference to um, Jesus. The Son, you shall call his name Jesus. The Holy Ghost, Jesus said, I will not leave you comfortless. I will come to you. So in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost, as reflected on the day of Pentecost when the disciple uh, Peter, Peter was actually uh, obeying the command of his Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. He told the people to repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins. And that is the only way we see baptism being done in the New Testament. Not in titles, no, not in the titles, not in the titles, but in the name that's been given unto us by the Father for salvation. There's no other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved but the name of Jesus Christ. And that's reflected uh, in the book of Acts. They baptize in the name of Jesus Christ in the name of the Lord Jesus, uh, never in titles. So let's have an understanding of who the titles are and who they represent, and it'll be well with us. So I pray this is an eye-opener. Maybe uh, uh, now you know something that you didn't know before. It's very simple, but uh, spending a little time on this, uh, once again, uh, I don't consider it a waste. Uh, it's going to benefit those uh, who have eyes to see, and God's granted them the mercy of being able to see these things. So may you go in peace in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen.